Matt, um, I guess uh, 24 hours out. Um, last week done and dusted. You've had your reviews. I mean, what, what's Ross's message been to you this week? Yeah, we had a really strong review. I mean, we, we know we had to move on pretty quickly. Got a big game, short turnaround, big game Friday night. So we learnt from what we're having down in uh, Tasmania. We feel like we'll, we'll move on. In terms of, I mean, Richmond's midfields obviously attract a bit of attention. I mean, how much time this week have you individually or as a group trying to put into nullifying what they'll produce tomorrow night? Yeah, we've identified their, their midfield as a real engine, you know, and a real bar barometer for how they're going. So, yeah, there's been a fair bit of time put into them and uh, we feel confident in our midfield that they'll be able to combat them adequately. Getting four quarters, uh, a key focus for you tomorrow night. You've had lapses in most of the games you've played this year. Yeah, it's another thing we've identified strongly. You know, there tends to be a 20-minute lapse where that really lets us down. So if we can put in a four-quarter effort and on the Anzacs that way, then we know we'll, we'll do our job. Does your role change because Matthew Pavlich is out? Matt, you've played that defensive forward role now for a couple of seasons, but you look like you're almost at times more of a marking target in attack um, with Matthew not there last weekend. Well, obviously no one can replace Matthew Pavlich, but I mean we all need to sort of share the workload. So, you know, as a member of the forward line down there at times, I, it'll, it'll be a, I have to take it upon myself to um, make sure I am that marking target. But we've got lots of targets down there. Kepler Bradley, Chris Mayne really standing up. How big a boost is Luke McFarlane, especially given how the Richmond forward line seems to be going? Yeah, obviously Luke's one of our, you know, you know, main players and in the leadership group, obviously, and um, plays an integ integral part to our team. So having him go out late last week was a bit of a surprise, but we, we moved on pretty quickly. But it's good to know that his, his health came first and, and now he's 100% ready to go. Ross saluted yesterday to Zach Clark's fitness, speaking of tools and, and maybe potential forwards. Uh, um, from what you've seen on the track, do you... I know the team speak today, but is he getting pretty close to, to putting his hand up? Zach had a great pre-season and he put his you know best foot forward in, in that sense. So you know he's definitely got the, the ability and the, uh, and the effort to go along with it. It's just a few things he needs to work on and hopefully he might, might get a crack this week. But um, if he puts a few good waffle games together, he'll be, he'll be right there real close. How would you spend Anzac Day, Matt? Myself, yeah. So if I wasn't playing football, I'd be going down to the service. I used to go down, and um, my uh, I've got some family connections to, to the Anzacs, and uh, means quite a bit to me, and means a lot to the other boys as well. There's a few boys that did uh, get up this morning and go down to the service. Gary Kibbertson, Mickey Barlow, and Jack Hanneth went down. So it's really great to hear that. But um, I'll try and honour them in my own special way tomorrow night. What, what family connections do you have? Oh, it's quite personal, mate. But yeah, my uh, my pop was in World War Two. Um, and it's been discussed by footballers everywhere. I mean, to try and compare footy and what they did is, is nonsensical. But I, I guess when you're standing there with the national anthem is played tomorrow night, I mean, um, it, does it feel like it's a, it's, a, it's a big occasion? Oh, definitely. It's probably the biggest day on the Australian calendar. And as Ross has alluded to before, you know, it's silly to try and compare us to, to you know, the bravery and, and the actions that the Anzacs did for us to, you know, ensure that we that we live today the way we do. But we'll go out there and do you know, our best job in, in terms of providing our effort you know, so to, to honour them in our own special way. Just back on the, the Richmond midfielder, what guys in particular have really caught your eye this season and, and last season as well? Yeah, obviously Cochin's, you know, stepped up. He's, he's the captain now and he's having a great impact, but also, you know, Delidio going through there, Shane Tuck still ra racking them up as well. So they've got, um, you know, a few guys in there that we need to keep a real close eye on. And Jack, uh, Revop can get a bit... Um frustrated at times. It's something you obviously try and lessen the ball supply and maybe um, make life a, a little tougher for him because he seems to get a little flustered at times if things aren't going his way. Yeah, he plays on the edge and with lots of passion and you know we respect that as well but obviously he's their spearhead and they'll try and go to him more often than not so we'll identify that and, and act accordingly.